Hello, my name is Ozzy, and today we're playing RimWorld. This game's currently in pre-alpha stage, so there's not a huge amount to show off yet, and this is being recorded in build 254. I've put a link in the description to the game's website, where you can grab access to the game for 30 US dollars, and I'll probably chuck an annotation on screen right around here somewhere, uh, and you can just click there instead. But enough about that, some of you might be wondering, what is RimWorld? As best I can explain it, it's a survival strategy kind of game. Uh, you'll start out with a few colonists that have crashed on an alien world, and you basically have to survive. Uh, one of the other main selling points behind this game is its storyteller. Uh, so here you've got some options for different AI storytellers. Uh, when you start, you're given a little bit of time to set yourself up, then semi-random events will start occurring based on what you've picked here. So I've got Chill Cali Classic, which is basically like an easy version of the game. Uh, it's, it's a slower storyteller, probably gives you more time between each event. Uh, I haven't actually tried it myself. Uh, we've got Cassandra Classic, uh, which is like your normal difficulty. Uh, you're, you're given the, the start to set yourself up and then uh, things will steadily get more and more difficult as you progress. Then Tough Cassandra Classic, which is your hard mode, if you like. Uh, I haven't played this one either, I've only, I've only played the normal so far. Um, but uh, this one, I imagine, uh, just basically throws tougher challenges at you and probably has a steeper difficulty curve. Uh, Phoebe Friendly, which is basically just more um, it's more of a basic storyteller and less, you know, here's some problems for you to deal with. I think this is just a basically a sort of more of a sandbox mode. And then Randy Random, which, as the name implies, is completely random. Um, you could start the game and then immediately get something that is almost impossible for you to deal with. And they're the five that exist so far. I believe more are coming in future releases. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start on Cassandra Classic, our normal difficulty. Uh, there's an advanced option here. All this does is allow you to change the map size. Uh, but as the game isn't optimized yet, uh, it actually recommends right here that you just stay on the smallest map size, which is what I'm going to be doing. So we'll go next. And then uh, these are my colonists that have crashed on this planet. So we've got Peters, a miner, Lamb, a settler, and Marsh, another miner. You've got a list of their actual skills here. Um, certain people will be incapable of certain tasks, so Peters can do anything. Uh, Lamb is incapable of caring or sh social interaction, and Marsh uh, can also perform any task. At the moment, the childhood, adulthood, and the, the traits are all just cosmetic. Uh, well, actually, no, sorry, the, the backstory, the childhood and adulthood, will affect your skills slightly. Um, and the traits are just cosmetic. They don't actually do anything in the game yet, uh, but they will in future versions. So having a closer look at Peters here, we've got, uh, he's a good mining, good at mining, as you might expect from a miner. Uh, he has a really good melee stat as well. Um, a little bit okay at construction and shooting and pretty poor at everything else. Our settler, Lamb, uh, good at melee, shooting, mining, growing, construction, so uh, he's a pretty good all-rounder there. And Marsh, again good at mining as you'd expect, uh, decent at research, construction, and then coming down in melee and everything else. Uh, so I don't have much in the way of cooking medicine uh, but we'll see how we go uh, th these are always random when you start so uh, the last game I played I actually started with three miners that were just awesome at mining and construction and then pretty bad at everything else and that got pretty interesting once raiders started attacking because uh, none of them could really shoot very well um, so we'll go ahead and start the game here it'll generate the world for you and I'll just pause once I get in. Uh, so the three of you awake in your long sleep sarcophagi, the sound of sirens and ripping metal. 
You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. A few hours later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So I'll just pause the game with the spacebar, um, and we'll go through what we've got so far. Actually, I'll just let the guys drop in. There we go. Uh, so here are my three colonists. Um, here is some debris left over from the spaceship crash, so I've got some metal and some food. This is my stockpile area, so everything will get, all, all metal and food uh, that gets picked up will be taken here. This is a little dumping area, which is just where um, rocks and like dead bodies, or not dead bodies, uh, animal corpses can be dumped here. Uh, dead bodies, you need graves, which we'll get into much later, I suspect. Um, and three beds for the, the colonists, but at the moment we're just outdoors. We don't really have anywhere safe to sleep. I'll just scroll out a little and have a look at the surroundings. Oops. Uh, so you can move the screen around with the WASD keys uh, or by putting your mouse to the edge, which isn't as fast. I'll just take a look. So this is my map area. Uh, it actually extends out beyond here. So I've got basically the entire western half of the map is just inside the these rocks. Uh, we've got some food up here, uh, steam ge geyser there, which is uh, an excellent power source, but that's a bit too far away at the moment. Got one closer here, but again, it's probably a little bit too far away just to start out with. Uh, I don't have the resources to build out very far. Um, and not a whole lot going on in this map. Looking at farmland, so these these grassy areas along here is where you can uh, create your own farmland and I'm just basically trying to think of where I'm going to build up for food uh, we've got a muffalo here, now at the moment I don't think you can hunt these for food I've tried and it hasn't worked uh, but I would suspect in a future release you can actually hunt them for food um, I'm not doing very well here for farmland. I might be able to fit one in here. Let's see how big they are, actually. And um, so, yeah, the four main things that you need to worry about at the start um, is your food, uh, power, which at the moment can be geothermal from the, the geysers, or solar power, which doesn't generate as much, but uh, you can just build that anywhere. Uh, you also need to worry about shelter, so you want somewhere safe to sleep. Um, and uh, your people generally don't like being outdoors either, if I click on someone. Um, so at the moment, their loyalty is based on uh, whatever is greater out of their happiness or their fear. And uh, various things in their environment will affect their happiness and their fear levels. So New Colony Optimism is making them quite happy. But uh, they're in darkness, so that decreases their happiness and increases their fear slightly. Um, and sleeping outdoors will decrease their happiness. Uh, eating raw food will decrease their happiness. Being in a you know messy environment will decrease their happiness. So you, you just need to manage that. If their uh, loyalty gets too low, I think below 10%, they can have a mental breakdown and basically just go berserk and start attacking everyone else. Um, and going back to the things you need to worry about, so that's that's uh, shelter and their needs. Um, you also need defences, so you'll get raiders that will come in and attack your colony. So I also want to build somewhere that's going to be pretty easy to defend. And this map hasn't given me too many options. I might look at maybe just building into the rock here and just have sort of my main entrance in this area and then I can just build my defences out here and it'll be it should be quite easy to defend and it's going to be nice and near to this little farmland I'll set up and close to my dumping area and my stockpile so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that um, so let's go in and plan I never remember where anything is in these menus. The menu is actually really well organized. I'm just really bad at remembering where things are. 
Um, so I'm going to make some orders to mine out into this rock. So I'm going to have sort of a, a main doorway. And then I'll have a three white corridor. Let's just have that go in a little bit for now. Um, I'll probably make this area here, like sort of where I put my solar power. So I'll leave a space here for uh, a battery room. So use batteries to store up power. That way when you're not generating power, uh, you've got some stored. So uh, solar generators obviously will only generate power during the day or when there's uh, sunlight on them. And so to you, you want to have batteries to store up that power during the day and then throughout the night you can uh, just feed off the batteries to to keep your power going. So, so just trying to plan this out a little. Um, I need the space for the walls around the corridor. Oops. Got too far there. So that'll be the walls around the corridor. Then I'm going to have a doorway here going into another room. This will be where I have my uh, food dispenser. So, just trying to plan that out. This is the actual interior of the room. So I'm going to want the food dispenser in one corner. Or probably need it to be about that wide. And then the wall around the outside of that. And we'll start off with just that because that'll probably take them a little while to. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. That'll take them a little while to mine out anyway. Um, I'm just going to. Uh, everything starts off being forbidden, so your colonists won't actually just go and grab things. Main reason for that is because, I mean, there's stuff out here, stuff all the way out here. You don't want your colonists walking across the map. So everything starts out forbidden. And I can use the F key to unforbid items, so you'll see the little red cross disappears. So that just tells my colonists they're allowed to gather these supplies. And I'm also going to go in. This uh, this overview uh, shows you what each colonist uh, you've given permission to do. So here, Lamb isn't capable of doctoring or warden, so they're not even available. Um, but what I like to do is actually set up manual priorities, because at the moment, everyone here is always going to firefight, then construct, then repair, then grow, etc. And basically, research and cleaning will just never get done, because I'm, I'm just always going to keep them busy. So I go to manual priorities, and I'll actually set people up to prioritize different tasks. Let's just get rid of everything and start from scratch. So I'm going to want, I want everyone to have firefighting as their top priority. If a fire breaks out, I, I just want that dealt with. Uh, and I mean, I'll, I'll probably want two doctors, and that's usually going to be a first priority as well, so I'll just set them up. Um, I just want one warden, so I'm going to make Pete as my warden, because he's slightly better at it. The brighter this box, the, uh, the better they are at the task. So Peters will be my warden. Uh, Lamb, what are you good at? You're good at construction and repairing, so I'm going to make those your priorities. Uh, and then growing, growing and plant cutting will be your, your other main task. These guys, I'm going to have you prioritize mining. Uh, so as you see here, I'm setting everything as one because it will still, with all of these, it'll still go from a left to right priority. So I don't need to drop down to two until I start coming back to the left. So I'm just setting up everything I want them to do first in order. So here, mining and hauling. Cleaning. Cleaning. So I'll put these as a third priority. There we go. And there we go, that's priority set up. So now uh, each person is actually going to be responsible for different tasks instead of just having, yeah, everyone can do everything in, in the same order. So we'll unpause that, and they'll all go ahead and start doing their assigned tasks. I can actually speed this up to a, just a, I think this is just double speed. Uh, and then you've got like a, a fast forward, which I've gone to now. Which might just be triple speed, but it just feels so much faster than that. Uh, leaving them to do their own thing. So they're going to mine this area out. 
Um, so I need to worry about... I need meal so I don't have much food. You start with very little food. So I'm actually building this area up here to be my food source anyway. So I'll pause the game and go into structure. So this is going to be my main entrance. Some walls around. I'll leave this open because I'm going to expand this way anyway. Um, I'll want a door there and might help if I actually had a door into this room. A door there. Uh, walls and doors will actually allow you to will have power lines inside them. So um, if I'm going to have my power source here, I can then just have like a power line coming into what will be my battery room. And then once that's connected to the walls, uh, this whole area will have power. Um, and I'll need to start working on that soon because everyone will start getting hungry. Actually, food, they're about halfway down, so I should probably want to get on that. Um, so, what do we need for food? We need solar generator. So, we'll start off with one because um, I don't really have the resources to build too many. I'll just put that, put that here. Then I'll mine into the wall and I'll hook that up with power lines to there. And in this building, I'm going to have my nutrient paste dispenser. Delicious. Uh, a table and some chairs for them. Uh, I'm also going to want light sources. So once an area is enclosed, it uh, becomes uh, indoors. So when they build these walls and everything, this will all become enclosed. Um, and then they'll need a light source, otherwise it'll just be complete darkness. And your colonists will very quickly just freak out in complete darkness. So I'll put some lights in there, which will receive power once this is all built. Uh, unfortunately... Oh no, fortunately I've just come into day, so... Um, I'm going to have some time to have the, the solar power running and everyone will be able to eat once this is all constructed, so I need that. Oh god, where is it? Power conduit. So, hook that up like that. There we go, so now we've got power. Another thing I want to do actually is set up my home area. So your home area is basically the area which your colonists will maintain, firefight, um, there's the area they'll clean. So if you don't set up a home area, basically nothing will ever get cleaned, nothing, fires will never get put out. So I need to keep all of this in mind. Um, that'll do for now. I mean, I'm going to move the beds indoors eventually anyway. So, oh, I may as well. I don't want there to be fires around here, so I'll set this as home areas. And then let that go about. So at the moment, you can see uh, it's getting late. It's going to night time, so I'm actually running out of power. This yellow bar in the middle of the solar panel here is actually how much power it's generating based on the sunlight hitting it. So uh, now that the sun's going down it's not generating as much power this whole area is being plunged into darkness which really sucks because now my nutrient paste dispenser is not receiving food and no one's going to be able to eat. So they're, they're going to start, they're going to have a hungry night. They're probably going to go to bed tonight and wake up very hungry in the morning. But when I get power They'll at least uh, at least be able to eat once I get power. I'm just gonna set up now a battery room so that I can start storing energy that I generate. So I'm just gonna make it a little one. Uh, that'll be enough to fit two batteries in. So that'll be good to keep get me started. Uh, so now they're going to bed. That's it, they've had enough, they need to rest. And I'll probably get warnings soon. Yeah, warnings soon about how hungry they're getting. Uh, no, yeah, 
put it on fast forward. Just play the waiting game. Power's coming back online, which is good. They'll wake up and they'll be able to eat straight away. Which they'll go do. And once that is built, I will go in. Uh, structure. So walls around the outside. Now you can just build walls straight over power conduits and it'll just replace them. Door there. And then I actually want two batteries. Oh, excuse me, in this room. And I want to add this to my home zone. There we go, they'll do that. Oh, he's built the battery before the walls. Damn it. So yeah, it helps to plan these things out a little bit because your colonists won't just build things in the order that you necessarily want. Uh, I'm gonna have to plunge everything back into darkness. Uh, structure. That's where I'd find walls. Build those two. Next ones, and then they'll be able to reach all of that. There we go, so now everything's connected by walls, uh, I've got power going to everything, so we've got lights, we've got food, somewhere to eat, we've got batteries to store our power during the day. Um, so this this is sort of my basic start, um, they've got enough to get themselves going. I don't have an actual source of food other than like a few bushes around here, so I'm going to need to build some farmland so that they can start growing their own food. Um, but this this is enough to get you started. Um, so I think I'll leave the first episode there, and that should do us.